soon it'll just be Homer Simpson type of haircuts, you know, cutting two or three hairs up there. So why would I pay $35 for them just to cut one or two hairs? You know, I just want, I really want people to kind of realize just how, how insignificant it can be, you know, but realize that it's a journey to, to come to that kind of realization. I was about 20 uh, when I found it and, you know, I really started to notice it. And I was 22. This is actually my one-year anniversary for, for being a uh, head shaven. And the opportunities that I was normally taking before I, I, I you know, was losing my hair, I, I wasn't jumping on as frequently. You know, Once you kind of can realize all the things you're missing out on, that is a big source of motivation, you know, to kind of decide, look, I've got to take control of this. Once you kind of realize that it's just another haircut, as one of your other guests had said, you know, it's just another haircut. It's just another style. It's, you know, it's not going to hinder anything in your career. It's not going to advance necessarily anything in your career. It's just another, it's just another thing. How's it going, everyone? And welcome to episode 18 of the Bald Cafe podcast. Today, I've got a very special guest for you guys. It's none other than Evan Yarrow. He also has his own YouTube channel, all about hair loss, talking about it, talks about his story. Today, we're gonna hear his story, give him some questions about the hair loss, and I'm really looking forward to it. Evan, how's it going, man? It's great to have you on air. Good, thank you so much for having me, man. It's, it's a pleasure, you know, I've, my last, I think, four or five videos that I've done have all had maybe their top comments saying, you gotta get on Bald Cafe, uh, get in touch with oh, Harry. Yeah? Absolutely, so I'm, I'm very happy to be here, man. It's, it's a pleasure. Fantastic, and I like that because, you know, why I love having guys like you, Max De Silva, we had Kevin on here as well, you know, guys that make videos talking about the same thing is because, if, imagine if I'm that guy, you know, way back when, when I was struggling with hair loss, looking for advice. And it's just so awesome now that they can come onto YouTube, maybe they watch one of my videos and they hear me talking about, you know, the best ways to get through it and get over it. And I say, you know, acceptance and all that things. And they say, hmm, yeah, maybe he's got a point. In the recommended, here comes Evan. Oh, I watch his videos, he's saying the same thing. Oh, who's this? Max De Silva saying the same thing, you know? I think it's just so much stronger, the message is so much stronger with more people talking about it, and it's growing. I can really feel that it's growing. You know, your YouTube channel is quite young, and it's fantastic. So, um, I love that more guys are starting to do this, and yeah, we can get you on the podcast, spread the love, spread the word. And it's just going to be even better. So I'm glad that guys were kind of, yeah, reaching out, saying get on here. And it's a pleasure to have you on it. Um, like always, Evan, we always just start with your story, okay? So, um, of course, I'll link your videos down in the description box for this one. And I suggest everyone listening, watching, go ahead, check out his videos, go and subscribe. But take me back. When did it first start for you? When did that lovely hair start going for you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the very first time it was actually brought up to me was by a friend. Um, so I think maybe that happens to, to quite a few other people as well, which I think can also sometimes be a little bit more of a shock too, because it might not be your self-discovery or it might not be, you know, you seeing your bald spot in either a video or in, you know, in a mirror or something like that. Um, but for me, it was actually a friend that brought it up. And at the time, it, you know, I took personal, I, I kind of took offense by, you know, by them pointing it out, but I realized that it was, you know, really helping me along uh, with my journey. But uh, what happened was, uh, it was back when I was in university, so I was quite young. Um, and this happened, I believe, when I was around 20 years old. So um, there's a lot of other, other young guys that, you know, I've reached out to and that, you know, we've uh, both reached out to in our, uh, in our videos and stuff. So I think that, you know, it happening to me so young, was something that you know I needed to grow with and learn with, and uh, finding you know those people that uh, on, on YouTube and, and channels such as that and Reddit was a big help for me. Um, but yeah, it, it was it was you know it was your typical kind of day. We went and played some basketball, and uh, it was super sweaty, and I had really fine hair at the time anyway. So it was it was a struggle either way with uh, with my hair, and you know coming back and we'd go and we'd sit and we'd play some video games for a couple hours or whatever, and I had a headset on at the time. And his headset was resting on my head for, you know, a couple hours. And after, yeah. we'd, after we'd been playing, uh, you know, I was still sweaty from basketball. You know, I had to get right into the game. I didn't have time to shower. You know how it is sometimes. And I took the headset off after it had been pressing on my head for, you know, two, two hours, two, three hours. And, and I didn't notice at the time, but my friend noticed. My hair was pressed down and you could just see my scalp, like, right through my hair. And, and my friend oh, really? mentioned it. Yeah, my friend mentioned it to me said, you look you're you're balding like you're going bald mate and i was like 
like I didn't I, I went and looked in the mirror and I looked in the mirror and I was like oh my goodness I am like like what a, what an experience and you know from from that point kind of on I became really self-conscious about it and you know I became much more aware of it and that process you know I didn't I didn't have time to kind of I feel like I didn't have time to really grow into it right. um, you know I've mentioned in, in a couple other of my videos that nobody else around me that I, in my immediate friend group or that I was in direct contact with was kind of going through the same thing that I was at that time so it was a, it was over the span of probably you know uh, two years where I really start to, to see it go in decline and wow yeah you know I I, I, I was kind of going through the the process of, of balding without what I felt like I had like I didn't feel like I had support at the time like I didn't feel like I could really reach out to anybody because uh, no one necessarily uh, around me like I said before was was having the same kind of issues that I was having with it so you know I, I, I wore hats a lot that's a that's a typical remedy um, and you know, I was in I was in my business program, so uh, unfortunately, I did have to you know not I couldn't hide it all the time, which was which was kind of hard for me. Um, but you know, uh, in in my business program, I had to get up and I had to do a lot of public speaking, and I had to had to you know uh, speak to a lot of people that I could clearly tell were watching me. So going through that process was was really hard on kind of my mental my mental psyche as well I was always yeah. kind of like second guessing myself I was like do people notice is it just okay. me you know that that typical kind of thing and, right. and so, uh, at the time I, I when I was going through it I you know I just tried very hard to, to push through and, and show like all my confidence and and no signs there maybe you have something to add there yeah I just I want to go back. I want to go back to when you first, um, you know, your friend first realized that, that it was going and he could see the sort of hair through the scalp. So before that time, had you ever noticed anything like, you know, people talk about washing your hair and seeing a lot of hair on your hands or in the drain or on the pillow? Did you ever notice any of those things when you were maybe, I want to say, you know, 16, 18, that sort of age? Or when you look back now, did, did you did you maybe it was happening, but you didn't really clock onto it? Did you have any any experience with that? Yeah, I mean, now that you mention it, I, I remember uh, back in back when I was in high school, I was uh, I played basketball, um, and I was you know we were, we would record our games. And, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd watch our, our game footage and, and, you know, see the different plays. And every once in a while, you know, when I'd swing my head or I'd, I'd be moving quickly, I'd, I'd kind of see this, you know, uh, white spot in the back right. of my head where I yeah. could see my, my head a little bit more. Yeah. But at the time, I was just like, oh, that's just my natural hair pattern, I yeah. guess. You know, it, it didn't even cross my mind that it would be, would be something that, you know, would eventually lead to me, uh, you know, losing my hair. So... And at so, the time, that that's what stood out to me. But yeah, and it's only when you look back that you kind of think, oh, maybe it was going a bit sooner. The reason why I mention it is because, you know, for me, I noticed mine when I was about twenty-five. Right by that time, there was a big bald spot at the crown, but it it must have been it must have started to fall out way before that because an, enough hair needs to fall out for you to realize, right? For you to, it, it, you know, it doesn't. It, you don't notice it when it's when you start balding, right? Necessarily, you've already started. The hair's already been falling out years before you actually realise. Oh, like it got, I've got a big bald spot here, and I mean it's going to be different for a lot of people, right? They're going to experience it at different levels. But yeah, I just wondered, you know, when you look back, and there may have been signs that you didn't notice were necessarily bald, you know, signs that you were balding, but when you look back, you think, oh, actually, yeah, maybe it did start a bit sooner, and, you know, I don't want to freak anyone out who's listening or watching, because guys are paranoid enough as it is, um, but it's, it's just an interesting point, you know, that often I think it starts to go before you've even noticed, right? How about, how yeah. about your family, um, you know, relatives, your father or grandfathers, things like that, were there, are they, are those guys bald? Um, yeah, so I actually, uh, my, my last video, I actually brought my mom on the, uh, on the podcast and she kind of talked about, uh, her relationship with my father and kind of what, uh, what struck her with him and cause he was, he was this, uh, 
he was this big Russian guy, right. you know, had the had a huge thick beard, but much bigger than yours, you know, all the way down to almost his belly. <laughs> you know, he had long hair coming out of his. Uh, he had long hair, and then just this, you know, the bald spot right in the right in the middle of there. Right. Um. So yeah, I, I talked to her and asked her kind of what her opinion was on him and what kind of struck her, you know, to to fall for this guy because you know at the time she had just come back from. Um, uh, her, her modeling in New York. She had just come back and moved uh, to this new area and met this guy, and he was a you know a musician uh, and a professor at the time. So you know she 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 mentioned to me that it never even crossed her mind that you know that he you know was follically challenged in the front or, or anything like that. That wasn't even an issue with her. Right. Um, he didn't have his head. He didn't have his head fully shaved. So. You know that 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 is something that was a little bit different now, but I mean back then it was the eighties, nineties, right? So it's a little bit of a different time. Um, but from my family side, my my father was was bald, and uh, and I I have some step brothers as well that you know do have uh, receding hair. But it's actually funny. I'm the youngest one in my immediate immediate family that you know had to take the plunge so early and, oh, and really started to embrace it at, at such a young age. Yeah. So I mean, I suppose that then there weren't any signs from family that um you, you never sort of thought growing up like oh i'd better make the most of this hair because it's not going to last you know i guess it kind of took you by surprise a little bit um yes and no i had a i had a really high hairline throughout most of most of my youth so i always I, it's really funny actually i made jokes to my friends all the time i'm like i'm gonna be the first one out of us that's bald you know oh really so i, I would i would I would crack those kind of jokes i had a really high hairline um i, I have some pictures of it uh, that, I've, that i've shown before where you can see that it's like up so high and I had that hairline my whole life, and you know, you know, before I lost my or I started losing my hair, I was cracking those jokes to my friends, you know, because I was always told that I looked older even when I had a full head of hair, yeah. um, just because my face shape, you know, I'm rather a tall gentleman for my age, uh, and all those things. And I started cracking those jokes, you know. I'd tell my my friends, I'd be like, hey, uh, you know, I'm going to be the first one. You guys are lucky. And when I started losing my hair, you know, I kind of took a gulp. I was like, oh, I got to stop cracking those jokes. That's a little bit. <laughs> it's very real now. Yeah. Right. Um, so, so that was that was kind of a funny uh, that was kind of a funny uh, uh, kind of encounter that I had, especially when I was growing up. It's a whole different it's a whole different world, and you kind of, you know, when I was growing up, I I, I I'm like I was a very tall uh, kid growing up, and so I was always worried about you know coming off as intimidating to certain people just because of my stature and you know just just how I presented myself I was very confident and I was always worried that I would you know uh, pressure people or feel make them feel intimidated so uh, you know having having that kind of you know having my hair receding and be able being able to make kind of uh, self-deprecating jokes I felt like you know made it a little bit easier for me to kind of communicate with with people that you know, might also be going through and having the same experience. Because like yourself, I did also have some friends at the time, um, not that weren't necessarily bald, but had shaved their heads or done things like that. And, you know, I had I had uh, quite a few girlfriends at the time, um, not girlfriends, but friends that are that were girls that uh, had gone through chemo and stuff and had shaved oh, really? their head. Yeah. Um, so uh, a couple close close friends, actually. So, you know, it was, it was very kind of personal for me as well yeah. um, to eventually go through that. So a yeah. lot of those jokes, you know, that I, that I had self-deprecating as well um, kind of included that into the into the conversation right. because, you know, it's not just you know just you and i that, that are that are experiencing experiencing this but it's also a lot of other people for sure yeah um, so yeah um i just want to talk a bit more you mentioned that you um were a bit worried that it might come up come off as intimidating and you were very confident is that you know when you when you had hair and and it was for, do you mean when it was going the hair was going and is that what was you were worrying about about shaving it or what do you mean by that yeah, absolutely. That was actually that was actually one thing that that I was kind of nervous about um, going into shaving it because my mind was set. I knew right away that I was going to shave my head. Right. You know, when I was going through my hair loss process and when I was doing that, I was just counting down the dates till I was going to eventually shave my head. I was I was saying, you know, I was counting the follicles as they say, receding until I'm like, all right, that last one at, <laughs> at this one, that's when I shave my head. Yeah. So uh, I definitely had the full intention of shaving my head I knew it was something that I was gonna do uh, and I knew it was something that I could confidently wear 
Um, you know, even if I didn't feel right away that I could confidently wear it, I was like, I knew that I can represent myself well enough and, you know, feel and believe in myself. And I've seen other people, you know, obviously older than me at the time, you know, being able to pull that look off. So I knew uh, with a confidence that I was going to shave my head and it was going to happen. And, you know, it was going to be a positive change for me. Yeah. Um, and, and, and that's something that, you know, I really, really stuck with and, and was really prepared for uh, and, and growing through that. So I was, you know, through my process of, you know, going through the hair loss and doing all that, I was, you know, always reminding myself, I was always, you know, you know, trying to pump myself up a little bit, um, saying, you're going to do this, it's, it's going to be great for you, you know, uh, things are going to happen. Um, I think the first uh, video that I actually saw was a, a Matt De Silva uh, video. I know you had him on your podcast. Yeah, that was yeah. a great podcast. I love watching that one. Um, as well as uh, this, the gentleman, I don't recall his name, but he's uh, the Entrepreneurs in yeah, Cars. Yeah, Entrepreneurs in Cars. Entrepreneurs yeah, in I cars, think his name's guys. Richard. Yeah, Richard, I think his name is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I watched, I watched his video as well, and I was like, all right, these guys are rocking it. That is what I'm going to do. You know what? You know, I'll put that on hold. Uh, I, I'm, my, my life is going to go forward. I'm focusing on my life. I'm going to shave my head. I have this kind of, you know, imaginary deadline that I'm going to do it. You know, I just have to finish up university. I'm not going to think about that at all. I'm just going to focus on what I'm doing. Uh, when the time comes, I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to full send on it and, and jump into it. Yeah. Um, so, and then back to what you were saying about how I felt kind of intimidating. That was one thing that I was worried about um, because I, I, uh, I, I really like to, you know, uh, I'm, I'm kind of a, a, like a, I'm more of a goofy kind of guy and, and, and I kind of enjoy like uh, communicating with people in a way that's not necessarily, you know, you know, butting heads. So I, I was a little bit worried about that because, you know, uh, I'm, I'm sure you kind of have the same experience being another tall, uh, tall fellow there is that it, it can be hard sometimes uh, having that first impression, you know, with yeah. people being either a little bit nervous around you and having my head fully shaved, I was very worried you know, with the, the stereotypes and all that, that typical kind of stuff um, about, about coming off that way. But, you know, when I did it and when I did shave my head and kind of went out and, and had these experiences and kind of what I was worried about, I, I just realized it's really all about your kind of, you know, energy that you're, you're putting out there. Yeah. You know, it's, it's how, you, how your face and expression, you know, how your eyes are, where you're looking and all those things. And the, the people, you know, I, I was worried that people might feel intimidated or, or nervous around me because I've done this, done this thing. But I realized, you know, if I'm smiling, if I'm, you know, confident and happy like I usually am, uh, and, and, you know, just showing that positive energy and spreading that positive energy when I'm around, you know, people are a lot more uh, reciprocal or they reciprocate that, that Definitely. kind of, you know, energy and, and are very happy to have you be around. Definitely. So that was one thing that I really worked on. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned right at the start, <clears throat> excuse me, you mentioned at the start about, um, you know, maybe when the hair was going and you were sort of at work and you couldn't hide it how it maybe might have affected that confidence. So I just want to keep that thought in mind because we're going to go back to that. But the thing I want to talk a little bit more about is um, <clears throat> obviously it seems like growing up, maybe even before the hair loss, obviously, you, you know, quite a confident guy, right? Um, confident in yourself, maybe confident in your ability, you know, well-educated, you've got goals, you know, plans, career goals, all things like that. And when the hair loss hits, something like this, you said, you know, you always had that plan that this was how you were going to tackle it, you know, you were just going to cut it no nonsense, you know, just get it done. When you felt the time was right, you were just going to go for it. And I just, what do you think is the reason why you were able to kind of have that frame of mind and why you didn't sort of, you know, look into the treatments or be you know, really down yourself and think, how can I hold on to this hair? What was the, some of the, you know, important things for you or maybe for how you, the way you thought that kind of allowed you to get to that level of confidence? Yeah, well, I think really, you know, having confidence and, and kind of believing in yourself is really giving yourself all the tools to be successful. Um, and, you know, I feel a lot more confident in my situation and I feel a lot more confident with myself when I have the ability to kind of control the environment around me, mm -hmm. at least immediately around me. When I feel like I have some sort of, some sort of control or some sort of partnership with the, the interactions around me and, you know, kind of how I express myself and how I, uh, you know, change it and grow. So I, I didn't feel like I would be, you know, doing the right path. I'd just be kind of hanging on to it if I started taking, you know, uh, the supplements and, and, you know, taking the, those hair loss treatments. Um, 
and I was really, really worried about the, the side effects of those. I mean, I, I don't know uh, if you've, I'm, I'm sure you have read into them quite a bit, um, but I, I, I figured, you know, having my health is a lot more important than having, you know, a couple extra strands of hair. Yeah. Um, so finding, finding that and having control uh, over the situation was I knew that if I had control over it, I could represent myself in a way you know, that I, that I would be happy with and that I feel like other people would be happy with. Um, because, you know, having that control and being able to, you know, find what, what can make you happy and what can, what can make you kind of be the person that you want to be, uh, it's, it's important. And and shaving my head, jumping right into that new or or really allowed me to, to kind of take control of my situation and feel confident with my situation. Yeah. it, It gives you you are in control and it's the other thing as well is not only control but it's certainty right when you decide to shave your head there's no guessing there's no you know it is what it is you're shaving your head you're getting rid of it it's certain right the other the problem with all of those other treatments is it's not certain the results how long it's going to last and so there you know again there's an element of a lack of control right a lack of certainty and and i think that's why even guys will argue, you know, that, yeah, I've had a hair transplant, so now I'm not even worried about it at all, you know. It's still not a cure. It still doesn't get you back to where you were 10 years ago. And there always will be that level of uncertainty. So you couldn't say 100% that you were, you know, you never crossed your mind, like, oh, I'm gonna, am I going to need a second one? Or, you know, oh, is it still looking thick? Is it still, you know, are the hairs sat right and stuff? There's always going to be that worrying if you go down that road and again you know i don't Mm -hmm. razz on people who want to do that but i just want to kind of make people think about it for a second you know really think about it um is going down that road going to give them the results that they are looking for which is at the end of the day is really to cure their sort of insecurities about losing their hair you know that is what it is um and so yeah Mm -hmm. when you decide like you said to take control I just wanted to mention there as well that you have certainty when you do that. Um, And so what got you up to that point then? So the hair was sort of going. um, You said you were wearing hats a lot. Um, How did you sort of, during that time frame, how long was that period of time from when you discovered it to when you decided to take action? And during that time, you know, what were some of the feelings that you have? Did you notice any sort of changes in your personality or you know, the way you felt and things like that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so to start with, for the time frame, uh, so it was I was about 20 uh, when I found it and, you know, I really started to notice it. And I was 22. This is actually my one-year anniversary for, for being uh, head shaven. Oh, cool. Um, uh, the, end of, the end of May last year was actually when oh, awesome. I did uh, take the plunge. So. So uh, I don't know if you you planned a celebration for me, but uh, perfect timing. <laughs> perfect timing. Um, but yeah, so so uh, so doing that, uh, doing that, you know, through that throughout that two year period, um, you know, the things that that changed for me was, uh, and I mentioned this before, um, was the opportunities that I, you know, uh, the opportunities that I was normally taking before I, I, I you know, was losing my hair. I, I wasn't jumping on as frequently, you know, for certain situations where I, I would have to, you know, uh, kind of fully expose that I, I'm losing my hair or, or fully um, show it. So, for example, you know, uh, I mentioned, so I, I played basketball all through high school and I played for two years in university. And and that was a huge thing for me. That was, you know, it kept me motivated. It kept me healthy. It kept me happy. You know, all these different things that put a routine into my life and, and allowed me to kind of focus. And then when I started uh, uh, losing my hair, I, I started, you know, going to the to work or going to play basketball less. I started, you know, just because of, you know, running around with your, you know, your hair all, all uh, sweaty and, you know, I felt like it, it really exposed me. So, you know, lo- missing out on some of those opportunities that had provided me with so much happiness before, um, you know, that really confirmed and, and really wow, pushed, yeah. pushed me to be like, I need to take this plunge maybe sooner than I think. Mm. If I'm missing out on opportunities because of it, that I usually get so much uh, happiness from, uh, then I, I really need to, to move forward and, and take the plunge sooner than I think, because my happiness is so much more important to me 
than, you know, maybe my outward appearance to other people. And, and having that having that plunge and being able to feel free from it and being able to, you know, take control of my situation and really, you know, come to realize just how much better it was for me personally, uh, for my happiness and my health and my interactions with other people. Um, that was a big change for me. And that was something that really motivated me to do it. Uh, so going through those, going through those experiences and missing out on some experiences as well. Um, I've talked in my other videos and I'm very, very honest. I, you know, going through that, I, I did say no to a lot of experiences that, you know, I had previously or would have previously said yes to, you know, going to parties, going to, you know, special events, going to play basketball, as I said, going swimming. That one was a big one. I didn't swim for probably a year. Not that I usually swim a lot, but, you know, it was something that I, I made a point to avoid. Um, and all those activities really brought me a lot of happiness before, you know, you, you feel like you're part of a community, you're engaging in different activities with people. So when, as soon as I realized I'm saying no to these great opportunities. I'm saying no to these things that have brought me so much happiness before. And through me saying no to these opportunities, I'm realizing that I'm just making my situation worse. I'm feeling more down on myself. And it's not just because of my hair loss. It's because I'm missing out on opportunities that usually brought me so much happiness. Yeah. You know, and, and so realizing that, I was like, wow. So I need to do this much sooner than I think. I need to... You know, because my happiness is way more important to me than than any other any other thing. You know, it's 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 pinnacle. It's crucial. Yeah. It, it's it stimulates my confidence. It stimulates my my self growth. It stimulates all these wonderful things for me. And you know, realizing where the source of my happiness is coming from. You know, saying no to those special events was was huge for me. It really really pushed me. And you know, I said I said I, I set my date like I said before. I said I'm gonna do it. I went through uh, university. I, I, I moved to a new uh, new country, actually. But um, so I'm down in. I moved to the U.S. because uh, my mom was living down here, and um, and yeah, and, and and so that was kind of my steps. And, and I'm sure I'll, I'll touch on going through my actual shaving process here in a little bit. But yeah. but that was you know one of the big things that, that helped me uh, help me go through that change. When you tie in missing on out on those experiences with wanting to have control. I think for me, I was very, very similar. You know, those things combined, I really didn't have any doubts on how I was going to tackle this hair loss when I, when I got to that point, when I, when I could have kind of could look in from the outside and realize what I was doing and how I was behaving and how I was feeling, you know, one of my biggest things that I enjoyed, and I, again, I've mentioned it is going to university. I used to love going to my university classes, learning Chinese here. And it got to the point where I just didn't like to sit in a classroom with other people because I was so worried they were going to see or look or talk about my damn balding head, you know. And it, it just ruined the experience for me, like you. And, and, um, and I, just, I was thinking about that rather than enjoying myself, enjoying the activity that I was doing. And so I think you're 100% right there. You know, once you kind of can realize all the things you're missing out on, that is a big source of motivation, you know, to kind of decide, look, I've got to take control of this. Um, like you said, all of all of that stuff is so much more important than some damn hair on, on my head, you know. And, and it's lucky, right? In a sense, I, I think, honestly, guys that can realize that are, are kind of lucky in a way um, because it varies for different people. But you know, for some guys, they struggle with that internal battle for so long, for so long, you know, putting the kind of outward appearance it's on such a, a pedestal, you know, really thinking that that is the deciding factor in how successful their life is or how happy they are, or how they are perceived. And um, in a sense, it's lucky when you can kind of realize that actually it's so much more to do with, like you said, your own happiness, your own sort of train of thought uh, and how you treat others and, and go about your life, right? Um, I suppose that's a good time then to talk about, like you said, taking that action, right? Taking that action. So um, you, you mentioned as well, you, you do have some work work goals, right? Um, did you ever worry that this look, as well as being maybe intimidating, would affect your sort of employability or anything like that? I've, I've had guys ask me about that, worrying that this look won't suit their sort of career. Did you ever think about that? Mm -hmm. So it, it never crossed my mind, to be honest, that it would be a detriment. 
Um, if anything, you know, I'm, I'm, I was in business myself. So I, I went into, into business. That was my, that was the education that I got. And there are so many, so many countless successful businessmen. I, you know, I could, you know, uh, Bezos, you know, there's, there, I, I could list off, uh, so many that I know personally, um, that are very, very successful businessmen, um, you know, that, that don't, that, that shave their head, that, yeah. that are, uh, fully bald, or, you know, even some that, that keep the, I guess the, the horseshoe or, or however you want to, how you want to call it. So, you know, I, I never felt that, that I would, uh, ever run into obstacles in that sense in the business world, you know, because business is so much about your personal interaction with other people yeah. and I knew as soon as I was face to face with another person I, I would be very easy for me to convince them you know that that you know my intentions were good or that that I'm not you know uh, you know someone who to, to be scared of or I would almost argue that it's in some way um, a bonus right it's a positive because um, I don't want to over quote Absolutely. it but we, we all know that study that shows you know guys who are bald or um you know ha like you said have the horseshoe or something uh you know i i kind of i think it's more professional in a way because you're showing people that even if you have something like that going on you know you're not going to let it affect your the business right or your work um and so i think that's much more in it especially in a business sense i think that's probably a a plus rather than some guy who's supposed to be running a business or, and always going to be. He's in the meantime. He's more focused on how he looks rather than you know his uh, his success mm. as a businessman or, or running a company or, or whatever job he's doing. So yeah. Anyway, I just uh, I wanted to yeah. hear your take on that. So this is going on for a few years. You know, you're you're in university still, right? And you 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 know in your mind that there's going to come a point where when you're going to take this action. And so you said there. You realize you were missing out on things, and I know that you made your video as well. You know, when is the best time to shave it? And we both know that it's all about up here, right? Not the hair, not how much hair you have, but it's all about how it's making you feel and making you think, right, day to day. Um, and so, what was the final thing then? You must have had a thing where you were like, right, the time is now. What was that sort of feeling for you, and, and, and how did you go about just getting rid of it? Yeah, I had a, I had a few different factors in, in play, but um, I, when, I, when I drove down to, uh, down to the, the States where I was you know, moving after, after university, um, it was kind of like a fresh start for me down here. I only knew a couple people because I'd been here before. And I, at the time, I, uh, you know, I, I, I still had my student loans. I was coming down here on, on a credit card and I had all these things. And it was just this one trigger. There was this one thing and, you know, it was, it was, I went to the hair salon and they, they said, yeah, we can cut your hair. It'll be $35 or whatever, you know, which it doesn't seem like that much, but I was just like, I have I have a clippers, I have a razor, why, why would I pay for it if I'm just going to shave my head like I know I'm going to uh, in, in, in you know, a month or a couple weeks or whatever I had planned. Yeah. So I was just like, alright, I'm not going to pay any more to, to the hair salon. I think I've done enough, you know, the, soon it'll just be Homer Simpson type of haircuts, you know, cutting two or three hairs up there. So why would I pay $35 for them just to cut one or two hairs? So I was like, alright, that's it. I'm, I'm just doing it. And uh, at the time, I, I, I told my mom I had my, my clippers in my hand. I was like, uh, Mom, I'm going to shave my head. I would love it if you helped me shave my head just so I can get the back looking nice. And she was like, I am not helping you shave your head. Oh, really? Like, this is, this is not something. Because I'd never, I'd never mentioned it to her before. Right. I'd never talked to her before about my, about my process and, you know, how I was feeling. I never mentioned to her, you know, that eventually I would want to shave my head because of because of how my hair loss was, I never had, I never communicated with her, you know, how insecure it made me feel, how, you know, how it made me um, upset, how I was kind of going through these things. And, and I never, I never told her that, hey, this is what's going to really help me, you know, take control of my situation and feel, you know, really proud of myself and really happy again. So the big thing for me is, is, you know, having that communication, you know, with your parents or your, your mom, especially, I know I've seen in the a lot of the comments and different, you know, and different threads that people have mentioned that their moms hate, the, you know, the shaved head look. Yeah. Um, but now, now that I've had it for a while, now that she could realizes how much happiness it brings me and, you know, it, it makes me feel confident, does all these things, she's more than happy with the, the shaved head. And she even tells me sometimes when it's growing out too long, she's like, oh, you got to shave your head again. It's, you've let it go for, you know, 
a week or so. Yeah. So it's it's having that kind of communication stream beforehand would have helped a lot. Yes. You yeah. know, to, to, to help her embrace that. Why um, um sorry but I just, yeah, you know I just want to interject on that. Why you know you obviously you've got these feelings, you know, you're worried about it and that did you talk to anyone about it? Why why didn't you sort of reach out and, and sort of mention it, do you think? Um well, it was it was kind of a coping mechanism for me for me as well. You know, I you know how I mentioned before. I said I'm I'm putting it on the shelf. I know I'm going to shave my head. When it comes to that, I'm just going to do it, mm. and then I you know then I can look for that type of support and I can look for those things. Um, and you know I I really doing that, saying shelving it, being like this is I'm going to do it. I've 100 percent come to the decision that I, it will happen and I am going to do it. Uh, I, I shelved that. I knew it was going to happen. And I just went on living my life, and that was kind of a way for me to not be completely distracted by it. You know, oh, still find uh, time to enjoy myself, still still find time to do all these things, and not fully jump into it or you know pitter myself along until I eventually do it. You know, building up my anxiety, building up my anxiety. You know, yes. oh my goodness, like uh, it's a week, it's it's a month away, kind of thing. So I was like, I'm doing it. I'm putting it on the shelf. It's going to happen. Write it in my diary. Sign my name. This is happening. You know, no no going back on that. Do a personal contract with yourself if you need to, with a date. Um, but I, I was like, this is happening. I'm doing it. Uh, I'm not stressing about it anymore. I know I'm doing it. I'm going to put it on the shelf. And I'm going to, it's going to happen. And that's kind of, you know, that relieved a lot of stress from me. You know, I wasn't anxious about it. I wasn't as worried about my, you know, my, my hair loss situation. So I, I put it on the shelf and, and then I eventually did it. And then when I did it, you know, that's kind of when, it, when, you know, when I started to, you know, try to grow into, into the change. And I've mentioned in my other videos, it wasn't necessarily right away that I had that immediate, you know, necessarily, um, uh, relief with my um, with my uh, necessarily my uh, mental state. I know I looked really great. I felt really good with with my confidence levels. But you know, until I really you know shared my my new look with people, then that's when I became comfortable. Because having this having my my new shaved head look kind of hidden from other people, and since I was in a different country at the time, and I was and I was tucked away. Having that kind of hidden built me up more anxiety than just, you know, sharing it with the world and yes, being like, hey, yes. this is the new me. This is how I'm presenting myself. Um, so what I did eventually was I, I um, you know, I shared it on, online. I shared a story on Instagram and I, I took a picture and it's, it's my uh, it's my icon picture for my uh, for my YouTube. And I posted it on uh, I posted on my Instagram and I captioned it um the new Johnny Sins, oh, I love or, it. Or, yeah. or Johnny Sins, two, <laughs> Johnny Sins two point and I forget what it was, and and I had I had a great response. I had a lot of people reach out to me and be like, "Wow, it looks amazing! You look really good! Like this is awesome!" And I had a lot of people, you know, being like, "Oh, I didn't even notice that that you're going through the thing, but you look fantastic like this." Yeah. And I had one comment. Um, <laughs> I had a couple comments from from uh, from ladies, you know, saying, oh, "It looks great, it looks good," but I had one comment. Um, from this uh, this girl that I knew that I knew quite well going through business school, and and she she uh, she wrote in her her message she was like, oh wow you do look so much like Johnny Sins, and, and so I, I was like I threw a little joke at her I was like oh you know Johnny Sins pretty well eh yeah and then she sent me back a message she's like I'm a pretty big fan uh, winky face you look <laughs> great kind of thing nice so nice. it was I mean yeah it was it was uh, it was a fun change it just goes to show that. Time and time again, you know, when we do these podcasts and guys like you are sharing your story, it goes to show time and time again, all of those fears, you know, that you think people are going to, because the main thing guys worry about is how people are going to react, you know, that's one of the biggest things that stop guys doing it or, and makes guys feel so bad when they are going bold. You just worry so much, how are going to people react? What are people going to think of me? And literally every time when you just go for it like that, you own it, you put a nice post up with that. I think I did something very similar. I think I captioned mine, the new me, right? I was just there, shaved head, I just said, the new me. And literally, people from all over, like, you know, way back in school, whatever, were like, good on you, looks great, like, love it, looks awesome, you know? It's just, when you own it like that, it's just, it's just any, it's just constant positivity. Um, and I think it's awesome, and I love it, and it gives me a lot of, faith 
in humanity as well when stuff like that happens you know it's just it's just a nice Absolutely. thing it's just a nice thing um and so i just want people out there yeah listening or watching like you know the you can't focus on the things the stories that you're telling yourself in your head about how ugly you're going to look how weird your head's going to look how horrified people are going to be looking at you because it's just not true and at the end of the day you're worrying about something that hasn't even happened which is a complete waste of time if nothing else you know um and so man i'm pleased i'm pleased you had such a good experience with it and i think it does help a lot right yeah absolutely and you know it's everyone goes at their different pace you know that's a big thing for me is that no one should feel pressured to jump right into it no one should you know feel like they need to do it tomorrow type of thing um everyone everyone has their own kind of time with it and everyone needs to you know go through their own process but it's like you said and it's like we we just talked about the amount of support that you get the support that you get from people all around you know just a resounding you know you look fantastic embrace your new self you know we're all here to support you it's such a great you know new look you seem happy you, you seem to enjoy it just go out there and conquer the world now you know the world's your oyster type of type of mentality and you know i think that's that's really good and you know any kind of doubt that you have you know going into it, it it's all just in your own head it's all your own kind of self doubt or you maybe you maybe you'll see someone look at you a little bit funny and you know it, but it might not have anything to do with you and and it usually doesn't have anything to do with your own personal kind of kind of a idea but you know when you're when you're in your own narrative you can set it up to be like oh they don't like the way I look or oh yeah. they don't like this yeah. but you know before even when you even when you do have you know when you do have everything that that you know you you would have before you know, if they gave you that look you might not even notice it but now that you're a little bit more self-conscious you start to start to notice those things so you need to let them roll off your shoulders and kind of embrace it yeah you become when you when you're anxious about it and that you just become hyper aware right of it and every time someone looks at you or something you just assume oh they must be thinking about that when in reality <laughs> when in reality they they they're either not thinking anything which is also something that's really mind blowing to a lot of guys um we had chris eag on the podcast before and he after he shaved his off he took a trip to the to the local mall right the local shopping center hoping that there would be you know thinking in his mind that there would the world would stop and there would be all these crazy reactions and when he he was like no one's like why isn't anyone looking at me you know such a, almost like an <laughs> anti climax no one's even looking at me like what is this i've i've built myself up i've done this huge thing for me and no one cares and that's also a part of it you know not only are you going to be receiving like positiveness or positivity sorry but also people are going to be like oh they're not even going to notice or they're going to be like oh i didn't even realize or you know it's just whatever to them because at the end of the day mm -hmm. they have their own things that they're worrying about you know and 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 if someone just says like yeah nice one cool and that's it end of story um especially when you just go for it right and you embrace it fully the new you like you said almost like a rebrand um yeah it's just it's just awesome and that's one of the awesome things about doing this and i'm sure you've experienced it and and will do is when guys come to you and they say share their story um it's just such a feel good thing when guys uh, are finally over it right all that worry is gone for them and they they just kind of realize it's almost cool when they just realize like oh it, i didn't even, it's not it's not even mm -hmm. a big deal but it was such a big deal mm -hmm. before and now they're like how yeah. how is how can this happen i've just shaved my head and now all of a sudden <laughs> it's just not even a big deal you know and it's just great it's just great and that's you know that's why we're doing this so it's awesome yeah yeah and yeah it's it's been such a, it's been such a pleasure to to do it i mean it, i i realize you know um cuz my first the first video that i posted i had i had just been on the reddit and i was looking through it and i saw so much support and i saw a lot of people also with questions about it and i posted the video probably about 4 months after i actually took the plunge or or maybe you made more than that maybe 6 months and i i just i felt like i could communicate in a in a video kind of how my feeling a little bit better than i could if i just wrote back to someone yeah um so so i sh i shared it you know i was i was in my car i just was using my iphone to record it type of deal and i i know i i i just wasn't expecting the response and the community of of people in here is so supportive and and yeah. so like such a such a healthy kind of community and i know that i don't want to throw shade at other people but i've 
I've seen other communities where they're more focused on like the treatment side or they're more focused on like getting hair transplant or, or taking the medication and and I've I've watched some of those videos and I've kind of gone through the comments and it makes me it makes me like kind of sad or get that anxiety again that I used to have just reading through that and kind of seeing that, yeah. that different style. So I've I've always loved the I've always loved the the support and and the growth from from the community itself. Just everyone's all on board, and you know everyone's been through it, or some people haven't yet, and they're still going through it. Um, but you know, coming out of the other side of of it, you know, you realize just how small the factor. Uh, what is your best sort of advice summed up for guys who are in that stage where they are, you know? struggling with this hair loss they're struggling with it they don't know what to do they don't know how to deal with it what would your advice be for those guys yeah so i mean if you're still going through the process and you're still you know um looking for cures or you're you know you're thinking about doing the plunge uh, and you're considering it and you think it's it's coming up and it's it's close to being your time um i think it's really important to you know identify what your what your goals are in uh, in life and what you're you're trying to accomplish and what you're trying to achieve i think it's a great opportunity and you know uh you've mentioned in one of your videos before that you know the younger it happens to you the more uh, the better it is in some cases because it really allows you to build that mental fortitude it really allows you to kind of identify what your what you're going to be doing going forward and what your goals are so take that time to uh sit down identify your goals see what see where your happiness comes from see where your your you know your confidence comes from uh and and see where your relationships are are, are kind of built from uh, and 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 realize it, like i realized right away my hair had nothing to do with any of my plans i sat down and you know i had i'd written out my my goals i'd written out kind of what the, the couple of things that made me happy i'd written out some some kind of uh relationship goals that i had and not in any of those three things once was my hair mentioned or my you know my my head appearance per se was was and in, in any of those things you know i realized that none of those things stemmed from my follicles you know none of those things stemmed from from that that you know that head appearance so you know my goals in life you know i want to be successful i want to go and pursue things and i want to be confident with what i want to pursue and i want to work in in an environment where i'm happy and and through that you know, I, I realized, well, not once did I just mention that I have to have a full head of hair or not once did I just mention that, you know, uh, bald is not an option. And, you know, once you kind of realize that it's just another haircut, as one of your other guests had said, you know, it's just another haircut. It's just another style. It's, you know, it's not going to hinder anything in your career. It's not going to advance necessarily anything in your career. It's just another, it's just another thing. So uh, going through that and in my relationships, you know, I not once in my relationships was I, you know, worried at all in, in, in the sense that I, you know, I wouldn't have a full head of hair. What would they think? You know, there's millions of guys all around the globe that, that, that are bald that have, you know, a really healthy, happy relationship. You know, there's a lot of guys that are bald that have, you know, a lot of, you know, really fun flings. You know, as you mentioned before in your other uh, podcast, the guy that wrote the book, The Game, you know, there's that iconic before and after photo of him with his, it looks like he glued hair onto his head. It was, you know, it was, it was thin, thin all over. And then he shaved his head and it was a whole new guy, you know, and that is a case, that is a case where, you know, he, he, he had something and he, he, you know, he, that wasn't maybe part of his goal, but he shaved his head and he was like, I'm a whole new person, you know, now all these women are talking to me, now all these things are happening, you know, and, and so in my relationship goals, you know, I, I, when I took the plunge, and I've done a video on this um, already kind of talking about it, but I really, you know, having that, that shaved head, it, what it did was it, it made me kind of rush off the other uh, things holding me back. So I, you know, I went out and I put myself out there. I was like, I've got nothing to lose now. You know, if people don't like me the now for, for what I am, you know, before I felt like I had everything. So if someone rejected me, I'd take it very personally. So when I had a when I had a full head of hair, I didn't take as many risks, especially in the in the in the dating kind of game. And but now that I took the plunge, I was like, I'm in control of my destiny. You know, if they don't like me because of some uh, some sort of thing, well, you know, move on to the next and, and keep growing from that. So I've had a lot of success in that in that in that uh, kind of area. And you know, I didn't uh, I didn't make it a large part of my my relationship. You know, conversation like that was in in, in all of my experiences since. Uh, I since this this in this past year, all my relationships that I've had with you know different women and and my current girlfriend that I do have, 
uh, it's never been a, a part of the conversation. You know, I've never, you know, I've never approached a girl and be like, hey, will you date me now that I have a shaved head or like that's never even crossed my mind or never even brought up. And, you know, most most people, you know, like you like we talked about earlier, you know, they, they they're in their own world kind of in a sense. And I was, too, where they're like, oh, they're only going to think about this one thing, you know. And, and, and so going for going forward that your goals, your relationships, you know, what you want to achieve in life and, and, and your happiness, you kind of realize that all of those things, once you write them down hair is never in the story and it never really was so there's nothing kind of holding it back so go out there and, and achieve what you want to achieve and don't don't let that don't let that hold you back at all because nobody else is is thinking about it like oh he doesn't have hair or, oh he's bald nobody else is thinking about it that oh i'm not going to date him or oh i'm not going to do this you know no one else is thinking oh he must not be happy or oh he is happy nobody's thinking that you know you're thinking that and if you are thinking that and projecting it onto people then then it, it won't come out good but you know write out your three goals you know your 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 goals that you want for life your your goals for relationships and your goals for your happiness and, and realize that none of that pertains to you know something as silly as you know having a, a certain hairstyle yeah don't believe into the hype you know especially like you mentioned there on in other sort of communities maybe the hair loss forums you know don't get wrapped up in that thought process that hair is going to be the deciding factor and all those things because it just isn't true. You know, it just isn't true. If that was true, then there would be sort of one look, right? And they would be doing all the successful things. But if you look at all the happy, successful people in the world, not one of them looks the same, right? Not one of them looks exactly, exactly. the same. And that should, you know, that tells you a lot just there. Yeah, and, and everyone has their has their own insecurities, you know. Um, you know, some people wake up in the morning, you know, they look at themselves, you know, and, and I feel really, really bad actually for, you know, uh, for especially people in the kind of that industry, especially in like the cosmetic in industry, like selling makeup, like selling all these things like Botox, like selling all these things to kind of change and, and alter your insecurities, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of challenging the world that we're in, you know, where, where everyone's trying to change their appearance when, you know, it might, you know, it's, it's a lot more about kind of how you are with yourself and, and those people that are super successful and are super confident, you know, I loved your videos on, on Michael Jordan, you know, talking about, yeah. you know, the difference between him and LeBron James. I thought that was really funny. I really enjoyed that, that video. And, I, and one other person that, that I would have loved to mention as well is Kobe Bryant. Yeah. You know, halfway halfway through his career, you know, before he had a big afro, and then about halfway through his career, he shaved his head, and you know, he went on to win championships and get all star nods and all those different things. So it's you know, you can be successful no matter how you look. It's just how you how much effort you put in, how much you believe in yourself, and really growing that that inner inner confidence and building that. It goes so much more beyond just just simple things like like having your hair. And you know, it takes a long time to realize that, but but when you do, it's it's a really but it's a really beautiful thing. Completely. And Evan, as you go through, you know, your, this journey yourself, are you going to continue to put more videos out there on the sort of topic of hair loss and things like that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I'm, I'm doing about one video a week right now. I, I just started a, a, an Instagram as well. Um, so, so go follow there as well. That's it's just Evan Yarrow uh, at Instagram, and um, I have my YouTube as well. It, it's Evan Yarrow as well. I'm going to be doing you know videos about once a week, and yeah, it's I, I really just kind of want to get out that that message that you know there's so much more to life. There's so much more to life, and you know you can get really negative and you can get really down, and there's there's a lot of a lot of people that are, are struggling with that, and I struggled with that. You know, kind of finding that that right mentality. Yeah. Um, really kind of embracing it and really kind of growing with that with that new change and you know once you kind of see that and kind of embrace it and you see people around you living their lives being successful being happy and not even a thought is crossing their mind you know and you see people uh, like yourself being such a such an icon in this in this kind of in this kind of world and seeing how successful you are you know seeing how successful and happy you know uh, happy you are with your situation how things are growing you know it's 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 such a it's such an inspiration to see and you know you see the rock you see um, you know the iconic uh, people that have their heads shaved and you know it's not even something that really crosses their mind so yeah. you know 
I just want, I really want people to kind of realize just how, how insignificant it can be, you know, but realize that it's a journey to, to come to that kind of realization. It took me a long time to, to grow and kind of really build that, but, but once you, once you kind of see that and really kind of change your mentality to be that, that more, that more positive uh, mindset, it's, you know, the, the world's your oyster, go out there and, and grab it. Definitely. And it's, it's, really like after doing all this i i honestly see it as is a positive thing and, and that's i'm being truthful because you know i'm lucky enough to not have had a lot of adversity in my life you know yeah family members you know died or whatnot old young but you know i've never myself had real adversity you know we're so lucky growing up in the uk or america or something like that you know and this if you if Something, if you're dealing with something like hair loss, if that's the, the most difficult thing you've dealt with, one, you're super lucky in that sense. And two, you know, it's a nice little way of just making you realize what really matters, right? What are the important things to yourself um, and in the world, right? And so, honestly, it's a blessing in disguise. I really believe it's a blessing in disguise. You know, you don't need to go down that rabbit hole of, of um, just all the treatments and trying to hold on to it and just prolonging, you know, all that negativity. You really don't need to. And um, Evan, I want to thank you so much, man. Thank you so much for coming on and uh, and sharing your insights. Of course, I will link, you know, all of your YouTube channel, Instagram, all of that stuff down there. I wish you all the best of luck with that because the more people that are out here talking about it, the better. And, um, you know, hopefully we can reconnect. Um, maybe there's, you know, chances in the future we can do more on this, you know, make, make, uh, talk about some, some different topics perhaps. Um, of course, you know, I say all the time, I'm going to get myself over to the States or I've got friends in Canada as well, wherever you're going to be. Um, I'm looking forward to it. So thanks for coming on. Thanks for doing what you're doing over on your channel. I think it's fantastic and, um, pleasure to, to, ha to have you here. And thank you, of course, to everyone listening. Any last words from you, Evan? Um, I just want to say thanks for having me on as well. You know, it's 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 great to have someone like yourself going up and, and putting in the putting in the work and really you know showing everyone uh, you know that there is a life beyond uh, you know or after taking the plunge and there is you know a, a huge huge potential and you know a lot of growth and you know I, I would love to have you come down here uh, to the to the US and, and visit yeah. some time where I'd, I'd love to go out to the UK. I've never been there before. Awesome. Yeah, uh, to grab a beer or something and do some fun stuff like that. But, but awesome. yeah, I mean. Yeah. You know, to everyone out there that's listening, you know, that, you know, embrace the change. You know, it's a great, great positive thing. There's, there's so much more, uh, you know, there's so much more to life. And, you know, it, you will, it will take time to, to go through the process and really find it. Um, and, you know, there, there is always downsides and there's always upsides. You know, there's a little bit of struggle on both ends. But, you know, once you come out the other side and, and really jump in and, and, and take the plunge and, and move on to the next chapter in your life, uh, you open a whole new book. So uh, I always I always say to, to, to do it. But and thank you very much again for having me on there. My pleasure. There. My pleasure. And, you know, you're, I, I know myself, and you can probably say the same thing, I'm stronger, more mentally strong, everything, having been through that struggle, having taken that medicine, you know. And, and again, that's another thing to think about. You're going to be a stronger person for it. So... Fantastic. Thank you again. Thanks to everyone for listening. That has been episode 18 of the Bold Cafe podcast. We will be back very soon with more people sharing their stories. We'll see you then. Goodbye.